One of the reasons that this is a difficult question to answer is because it starts with a premise point of judgmental. Okay, just the word itself is bad, and none of us want to be judgmental. It's funny because the Bible will say, do not judge, lest you be judged. And then it's going to go on, and it's going to say, you need to judge this, you need to judge this. As a parent, I need to make judgment in my home. It sounds terrible, doesn't it? I mean, judgment. But it means making a decision, like a legal decision in a court of law. I need to make a decision. And in my home, as a father, I need to make decisions. My kids are having a squabble. I need to make a decision. That's called judgment, according to Scripture, right? And yet there's two types of judging. That is a judging of the flesh, which is of self-interest for my own gain, for my own position, for my own preservation, and one that is of the Spirit. And so as a result, we are actually called to judge, but according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. But I get the question, okay? But the question is set up in such a way where it makes it hard because how can I influence the culture without being judgmental? I need to make decision in this culture. I need to make decision on what is a lie and what is truth. I need to make a decision on what is dark and what is light. I need to make a decision on what is right and what is wrong. And the world doesn't want that. They don't want to hear that this behavior is wrong. So as a result, it pins a Christian into a cult corner if it's like you can't be judgmental. No, you shouldn't be judgmental out of the flesh because your motivation is love as a Christian. Your desire is to see people set free. But if I make a statement like homosexuality is wrong, I mean, you, we all know that's, that's incorrect. And how can I impact the culture if I make such a statement? And yet, if I am motivated by love, my desire is to say, look, I know that if you keep heading in this direction, you're going to die. And I love you too much to do nothing. So therefore, even though I'm making a judgment on something, and that sounds terrible, I'm actually doing it because I love and am motivated to see someone rescued. That's Christianity. And so Christianity engages with a culture in truth and in grace, in love in mercy, but also with a keen eye towards justice. It wants to rightly divide and discern in every situation. We have some situations today that are very difficult. Black Lives Matter is one of those situations that in the year 2020, 2020, in the year 2020, has emerged onto the scene of time. And just in the, the phraseology itself, Black Lives Matter, of course, you know, that, of course, black lives matter. That's a, that's a given. However, the organization itself is godless. It is anti-male. It is anti-white. It's like, whoa, we got some issues here. It is anti-normal sexuality. It's pro, uh, what, what the term they have of whatever form of sexuality is opposite a biblical worldview. In other words, it's a smack in the face of the biblical framework. So how do I, as a Christian, effectively engage in something like that without being judgmental. Well, I need to make a judgment on what is right and wrong and what is lie and what is uh, truth. And so I can say, look, that is an unhealthy organization and it, its basis and its operation is unhealthy. However, I do agree that there can be racial prejudice at large in our culture and that needs to be mitigated against and it needs to be changed. If, if the church is participating in any type of racial prejudice, absolutely, that should be dealt with. And so it's knowing how to separate out these issues and ironically, in that, I'm changing the world, but also in making a judgment. And so it's not the removal of judgments, it's the removal of what we would probably term judgmentalism, which would, we would say is out of the flesh, it's out of the wrong spirit, it's out of spite, it's out of anger, it's out of hatred. That's not gonna help anyone. Love, mercy, kindness changes the world. If you'd like to take these truths deeper, join us here at Ellerslie for one of our upcoming discipleship programs.